Welcome to Moving Through Midlife. I am your host, Courtney, a personal trainer and movement specialist who wants to help you move through midlife with more grace. Each week, we will discuss ways we can show up better for ourselves and our children without the burnout. We will focus on overall health through habit stacking to help increase energy, provide movement snacks to help you move more throughout the day while also moving your body more, and learn from professionals on moving through midlife with ease so that you can feel confident with aging gracefully. Grab your earbuds and join me on a leisurely walk while we discuss moving through midlife. Today, we are diving deeper into cortisol. There are many times where I will mention in an episode how cortisol may be affecting you based on perimenopause. And I will even go on to say there are certain things you may be doing that are deemed healthy, but too much of it can then create uh, chaos in the body because you're then hitting too much cortisol. And that's what I wanted to speak today because I don't think I've ever really dived deep into the effects of cortisol, what may be increasing your cortisol levels, and things that you can do to help bring them back down. So the first thing to do is to tell you what cortisol is. I think most of us know what it is. It is a stress hormone that helps us cope with stress. The problem is, is too much or too little can harm our health and our mood. For those of us in these midlife years, this is where things become a problem because cortisol affects the body's metabolism, immune system, and muscle mass. And what happens is during perimenopause, the body's production of estrogen and progesterone declines which can lead to higher cortisol levels and more stress. So remember, progesterone is that calming hormone. And when you don't have that there, your cortisol levels are rising. So higher cortisol levels can also affect the levels of adrenaline and noradrenaline, which are other stress hormones. And these imbalances can also cause weight gain, fatigue, and mood swings. And I'm going to tell you, that seems to be the life during midlife. How many times do you deal with all of these things? I think many of us don't realize how we can be affecting our body on a daily basis. And I mean, not just our body physically, but mentally as well. And how different things, even though they're deemed healthy, could be affecting you. So I'm going to take you through a list of things that could increase your cortisol levels. And then I do want to caveat this, that as always, you need to assess for yourself how your body is affected by something. But these are the things that increase cortisol levels. And I will have a checklist if you go to formfitonline.com backslash cortisol checklist, you can download that checklist and you can just check off all of the things that you practice or that you are dealing with. And you can see how much you may be bumping up your cortisol levels. And that may help you better determine what you need to be focusing on and paying attention to. Some of these you may have heard of, some of them you may not have. We're just going to go down the list. So there are things like foods high in sugar. If you're eating a lot of high sugary foods or drinks, you are increasing your cortisol. If you eat a lot of refined flours, so think those packaged goods, um, anything with flour, carbohydrates, processed foods, all of that, you are increasing your cortisol. Alcohol is a big cortisol increaser. Caffeine, 
skipping meals. So intermittent fasting can be good, but if you're dealing with a big uptick in cortisol level because of all of these things being checked off, intermittent fasting may not be so good. So not only intermittent fasting, but another thing that I find that us women struggle with is skipping meals. How many times, I mean, I do it myself. I'm working at the computer. Sometimes it's easier just to keep going with whatever we're doing than to stop and break for lunch. And that is where you are skipping meals. And sometimes our body can sense that as a stressor and it will increase cortisol levels. High intensity workouts. Here again, one of those things that you have probably heard me mention in past episodes where I talk about a little bit is good, too much of a good thing can become bad. So I usually recommend for those in midlife, especially as you get later into the perimenopausal phase, so 45 and above, you really want to start toning down the amount of high intensity exercises you're doing or workouts you are doing. So I usually recommend one to two at most for women 45 and up. And then depending on how you feel, even as early as 35, 36, you may want to start bringing that down. I don't recommend five days of high intensity workouts really ever. The next one would be stress. Obviously, the regular stress that you deal with the day in, day out, the minor stresses, the big stressors can be affecting you. Corticosteroids. So anything ending in the O-N-E. So proge- uh, not progesterone, I'm sorry, uh, cortisone, things like that. Those are corticosteroids. Increased estrogen. So for those of you, um, before we start to lose our estrogen, we will have an uptick in estrogen. And for those of you, if you're not eating a lot of cruciferous vegetables, you may have higher amounts of estrogen within your body. So looking to try to get rid of that is important. I always recommend cruciferous vegetables. I think that's the easiest way because it helps to bind um, estrogen to help get rid of it through your waist. And that is what I would recommend you do. Um, But increased estrogen is something that also increases your cortisol. Sleep deprivation. If you're not getting a good night's sleep, maybe only sleeping five hours an evening, dealing with insomnia or sleep apnea as well. If you suffer with sleep apnea, you may have higher levels of cortisol. If you take a long commute to work every day, you will naturally deal with higher cortisol because you're dealing with all the crazy people on the road. (laughs) Poor posture. I found this one interesting. If you deal with slumped shoulders, this just has this um, sense of malaise, this lack of confidence. This also can increase your cortisol levels. Smoking, marijuana usage, drug use, anything like that. Staying up late is another one. Not even, even though you're not sleep deprived, if you stay up past, it's, I believe it's 10 o'clock. You can go back to my sleep episode. That is episode 25, how to get a better night's sleep. I mentioned that there is a certain time that you want to go to sleep by. Um, because it helps with that natural circadian rhythm. And I think it's 10 o'clock, but it also allows for you to get that deep sleep because you can naturally sense light when the sun comes up. Your skin, even though your eyes are closed, your skin can sense that light and that will then affect the start of cortisol rising so that you will not have that circadian rhythm in place. Hopefully that makes sense. So staying up late, even if you get seven to eight hours of sleep, will be affecting your cortisol levels. Excess sodium. If you're dealing with too much sodium, especially the sodium from um, processed foods, excess omega-6, 
which you would find in your seed oils, again, found in processed foods. But if you are one who uses a lot of um, seed oils, like say your canola, your vegetable oils, your grape seed, those are usually very high in omega-6 and those create an inflammatory response in the body. So that will naturally increase your cortisol levels. If you are deemed to be overweight, anytime we carry excess weight on our frame, it does create a cortisol response in our body. If you are low in certain nutrients, so magnesium, zinc, vitamin A, and potassium, if you're low in those nutrients, you are going to have a higher cortisol level. I'll break that down even further for you. So if we think of, yes, of course, if you are taking electrolytes and taking vitamins, you probably will have these nutrients. But if you are, and I would encourage everyone to eat more foods to gather these nutrients. So for magnesium, if you are eating chia seeds, spinach, soy milk, edamame, peanut butter, and brown rice, avocados, bananas, papaya, all of these are, are high in magnesium. Foods high in zinc would be oysters, chickpea, ricotta, spinach, avocado, chicken, eggs. Those are all great sources of zinc. So if you're eating those on a daily basis, you should be fine. One that might be a little bit more difficult is your vitamin A, so liverwurst, cod liver oil, goat cheese, Limburger, cheddar cheese, camembert, lots of your smelly cheeses, uh, Roquefort, cream cheese, cantaloupe, grapefruit, papaya, melons, watermelon, tangerine, things like that. All of those are a good source of vitamin A. And then potassium is spinach, watermelon, coconut water, legumes, tomato paste, butternut squash, chard, pomegranates, avocados, beans. So you can see where if you are eating a diverse amount of fruits and vegetables, you should be okay with a lot of these nutrients, which is why I talk so much about making sure that you are eating those fruits and vegetables, not just eating a specific kind each week, but trying to vary throughout the weeks and the months to, so that you are getting all the different nutrients that are being provided in these foods. Okay, two more things. Um, and I, I'm sure this list could go even further. And if I find any others, I'll add them to the checklist. But pain, if you are dealing with physical pain in your body, you are increasing your cortisol levels. And then even hot and cold therapies. So yes, hot and cold therapies are good, but they do create a cortisol response in the body. So when we look at this list, the whole goal is not to say, okay, I have to get rid of all of these things because cortisol is good. I mentioned that at the beginning. It helps your body to deal with stress. So it's not a bad thing to have a cortisol response. The problem is for many of us, we have a bombardment of cortisol responses. You see the list. If you could tick off more than 10, you probably are hitting yourself a lot throughout the day, which is increasing your cortisol, which is then creating more stress for the body. It's not able to cope with it as easily as it would even a few years earlier. You could have dealt better with these stressors. But as we get older, we are, you know, we have to look at things differently. We have to work on decreasing some of these things. And I really would encourage you to look at it because I know for some, you might be thinking like, oh, great, take all the fun <laughs> away or all, all the things I want to do. You've got to take it all away. But really you can it's reframing and looking at things through a different lens and finding the joys in some different things. For me, 
I used to, I, I enjoyed staying up late. I enjoyed going out with friends and going out to dinner and having my glass of wine and things like that. But I really started paying attention and listening to my body. And I started to see where certain things that I enjoyed were not bringing me the same amount of pleasure as they used to. And then I looked for different ways to find pleasure. So maybe reading a book in the evening and drinking hot tea, that would all be that calming effect for me, decreasing my cortisol levels, but I could still find pleasure in doing certain things that I enjoy doing. So that is kind of the key with this is not looking at all of this and thinking I've got to change everything, but looking at it, determining what things can I get rid of. Maybe there's something on this list that you, it doesn't really matter to you that much. Maybe you realize I, I could go to bed, you know, an hour earlier that works. So you work on that, but maybe you want to continue to drink your coffee. Me, I'm going to drink my coffee. I don't see myself getting rid of that. So for me, I'm going to look at other areas, other things that I can work on to decrease my cortisol levels rather than getting rid of my coffee. The other thing is just noticing how you feel when you do these certain things. Um, like I had mentioned, the hot and cold therapy. My husband, oh my goodness, he is so excited. He has created a cold bath for himself. He bought this huge freezer. It's a deep freezer and he's not a handyman, but he has done whatever he needed to do to seal this freezer up to get it water safe. And he has like a temperature on it. It gets down to 40 degrees and he goes in it every single morning and he won't stop talking about this darn cold therapy that he does. And he loves it. And he's tried to convince me to go in there. I hate cold water. But um, I did go in it once when he changed out the water. So it wasn't 40 degrees. Thank goodness. It was like 57, 58. And I stayed in there maybe two minutes. Yeah, it felt good. And that's where, you know, I kept telling him how I had heard that cold therapy wasn't good for you in perimenopause, that it can create a fight or flight response in the body. And he's like, just try it, just try it and see. So I did, I, I did try it. And honestly, I was surprised. I personally thought I would have a fight or flight response, but I didn't. So for me, that might be something that doesn't bother me. Again, it's you have to look at this information and apply it to yourself and determine, do I have a certain feeling? Do I feel jittery after? Do I feel a certain way? Do I feel anxious? If you are feeling good and you're feeling calm and these things aren't bothering you, then you don't have to worry so much. But for some of you, just realize as we get older... As we're going through this midlife stage, you will start to notice that you don't feel as good as maybe you did three or four years before. A lot of it has to do with cortisol, which is why I wanted to present this to you. So start taking a couple away, see how you feel. And the goal is to then start working on ways to lower your cortisol levels and these are probably things that you've heard me mention many times. These are all the things that you hear about to live a healthier lifestyle. So make sure you're getting the right amount of sleep, prioritizing sleep, get regular exercise in, practice breathing techniques to help calm you, have fun and laugh with family and friends, maintain healthy relationships, find people to surround yourself who bring you up, don't pull you down, take care of a pet that can help decrease cortisol levels, just you petting a pet, or even for those that have grandbabies, just holding and hugging, even your children, holding and hugging. I would, I've got three teenagers now, so <laughs> there's not much holding and hugging them. They don't allow for that. But hugging someone, I think they say like 30 to 45 seconds, it starts to drop the cortisol levels. And then some self-care 
all of those things are going to help bring that cortisol level down. Also look at the list and decide if there's anything that you want to take away and just start noticing if you start to feel better. From there, I'd love for you to also join us in our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook. You can also go to movingthroughmidlife.com and that's going to provide you a direct link to go there. Also, we'll share with you the services that we offer. We offer movement, fitness, exercise classes, and then our Transform Coaching Program. We have another one opening very soon. It is a six-week coaching program where we work through all of these healthy habits. And if you could do me a favor, if you enjoyed this episode, would you please share this with a friend of yours, maybe someone else who's going through this midlife journey? This way, the more people that hear about us, the more that you review the podcast, these things help us to reach more people and therefore I can bring on more guests to speak with you and provide you more great information. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and make sure to keep moving. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found something to take away to help you practice healthier habits, move more, or handle the midlife and aging with grace. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or leave us a review to help us reach more moms just like you. Head to movingthroughmidlife.com to join the free community or learn how you can move more and feel better in your daily life.